I saw a lot of interesting things. Uh, the first one was the fact that there were so many private sector uh, participants, a lot of interesting things, gaming, um, e-learning solutions that are going on. So you have the, uh, the developers, you have the content people, uh, you have the universities. It was fascinating to see the, the different levels and different kinds of exhibitions that took place. Uh, you know, the, of course, Africa is not as, as, as diverse because this is a nascent industry. But here, uh, you kind of saw the full range. Uh, you had data uh, analytic companies as well as co um, uh, software developing companies as well as uh, academic institutions, which is, which is absolutely fascinating. The valuable thing is uh, the inspirational speakers uh, that I had the pleasure of chairing the, the opening plenary and the kind of mind-blowing issues that they raised um, from things that were happening from Howard Rheingold in terms of uh, the co-learning concept, uh, the pure, pierology uh, that he, he, he talked about, um, and the new things and the new boundaries that of e-learning that he was experimenting with through um, his uh, work with uh, media, digital media uh, with MacArthur Foundation and also the universities of California and Stanford. Um, I also appreciated very much uh, uh, the Pearson representative's presentation on, on the kinds of innovations that is required, learning innovation, content innovation, um, and infrastructure innovation. So that was for, and then the futurist speaker who spoke about the fact that all what we're learning and talking about will be obsolete and um, the new dimensions come in. Um, so yeah, bio-innovation is one of them. So it, it was absolutely fascinating um, to, to hear this from a global context. You know, the global nature of the conference makes it actually quite supreme. The, the post-2015 agenda from an African perspective is looking at people-centered development and within that we're looking at the whole issue of education and therefore distance learning, online learning and the role of ICTs will be very, very critical. And so we are looking at calling for countries in Africa to, to speed up on their ICT infrastructure layout because that's going to be key. Um, and also we're looking at economic transformation in Africa. And if you're talking about economic transformation, again, you cannot dismiss the areas of innovation of ICTs. So it, these are going to be very critical in, in, in terms of the post-2015 agenda, particularly when countries begin to implement. They're going to have to uh, deploy ICTs to, to do that. Well, getting governments to stick to what they've agreed, um, getting governments to realize that there's, it's very uh, necessary to transform their ICT sectors and to make it more modern, to invest in ICT infrastructure across their countries, um, to make sure that ICTs is introduced into the economy. Um, particularly if you're looking at trade services, you do need ICTs, online trade and all of that. So yeah, I mean it's going to be how do you mobilize these countries to begin to look at that. Already countries are already investing in ICTs, but then we're looking at an, an acceleration. And so for me that's going to be the challenge. Getting them to stick to those commi co commitments is, is going to be key.